Okay, we're going to start with lab one, measurement one. We're going to go ahead and we're going to measure a uh, three meter, 50 ohm cable. Starting out with the Bode 100, which has already been calibrated at the output port, we'll make a single port reflection measurement. And you'll notice that measuring the cable, we can see it starts out at about 10,000 ohms now. And we can see one uh, series resonance that shows up at about two ohms. And we can show one anti-resonance that's showing up at almost a thousand ohms. So we now have an impedance measurement that starts from 10,000 ohms and there's two resonant modes, one series resonant mode at two ohms and one series or anti-series resonant mode at about a thousand ohms. And so this represents the load end of our measurement. This is where our high speed circuits would be. And at the other end of the cable is where we're going to represent the voltage regulator. And in place of the voltage regulator model, uh, we're going to place a very low impedance regulator. And now you can see we start out at a very low impedance from the regulator and we see uh, a few hundred milliohms from the cable. And now the cable looks inductive. And again, we end up with two resonant modes. Uh, we end up with a maximum impedance resonance of about 1,200 ohms or so at 17 megahertz. And we end up with a series resonance at a higher frequency here at about 2 ohms. And we can save that to memory. Now, if the load were matched to the cable, and this is a 50 ohm cable, so if we had a voltage regulator, that were 50 ohms, then you can see we end up with a nice flat line at the match point, which in our case is 50 ohms, and you can see that intersects all right about here. And so what we've shown is that the cable itself is a transmission line, and if we look at the high speed load end of our cable, we can end up with a very high impedance by placing a low resistance regulator and we can end up with a low resistance at the load by putting a high impedance regulator. And that's interesting from the perspective that it's, it's kind of counterintuitive. But if we end up with a transient signal that's too big at the load, then chances are that the way we fix it is by increasing the resistance of the voltage regulator. And that would seem to be counterintuitive. And so in, in measurement two, we can do the same thing but this time we'll use a printed circuit board. And so here we have a, a 50 ohm printed circuit board trace. And in the same way, we can measure the impedance. Right now, there's no connection at the load end. And so the, the uh, printed circuit board actually looks, uh, at this point, capacitive. At the far end, we can also do the same thing we did with the cable. And so we can make the voltage regulator side appear to be a very low impedance. In this case, we've connected a short circuit in place of the voltage regulator. And now you can see here um, that we have an inductive trace. And somewhere at low frequency, we'd have a, a much lower resistance, probably down in the milliohms. And of course, with the open cable, we'd have a much higher impedance. But we can see them starting toward to converge. And where they converge to is to the pivot point or the balance point of this transmission line, which again should be close to 50 ohms. And so now if we put a 50 ohm voltage regulator module which matches the cable, you'll see again we have this nice flat line uh, that runs right down about the center. And if we could go to higher frequencies, we would see that this capacitive line, the matched line, and the inductive line would all intersect, and they would intersect at that match point. Now, interestingly, we do have enough data here that we can tell what the impedance of this printed circuit board trace is. And we can do that by taking measurements at any particular frequency. And if we take the square root of the open measurement multiplied by the short measurement, that square root would tell us the characteristic 
impedance of that plane. But so again, we've shown now that, that a cable shows as a transmission line, and we can get the lowest impedance by matching the VRM to the transmission line and also to the load. And we also showed that that's similar when we use a printed circuit board trace that also has such an impedance. But we can also look at this in a real circuit. Okay. And so now, in this case, we're actually looking at the impedance of a power rail that runs from our linear regulator up to our clocks. And so right now, um, we can choose which capacitors we're using for our linear regulator. And each different capacitor will end up with a different response. So if we maximize this, and we go ahead and we save that in our memory trace, now we can see here's the capacitive impedance. We can see the you know, series resonance. We can see the inductive region. And we can also see a resonance that shows up near the clock uh, from a ceramic capacitor that resonates with our trace. And so now we can see that impedance. And we've saved that to memory. We can choose different capacitors. And so, for example, we could choose this uh, high ESR capacitor. And now you can see here's the high ESR capacitor, here's the capacitance, and here's the inductance of our plane. And in the same way that we showed that it was important for us to match the voltage regulator impedance to the plane and also to the load in order to minimize the noise, we can see that here as well. So here we chose a capacitor that had high ESR, and the high ESR resulted in a smaller peak at the clock. That's counterintuitive. That says that we make the impedance lower by raising the impedance of the VRM. Now, we can't actually see where the characteristic impedance of the plane is, but, but we know where it is. And so we've inserted a resistor at that magnitude. And so now you can see that if we insert a series resistor between the voltage regulator and our clock circuit, so that we end up with a matched interface. You can see now we have a two and a half ohm line. I guess that would say that the regulation of the power supply would be poor due to the series resistance. But if you take a look at what the clock sees, notice that the peak is entirely gone. So we've actually improved the performance of the clock by 20 dB by putting in a very high resistance regulator. Again, that's counterintuitive, but it proves our point that we've said that everything here is established as a balance point. The voltage regulator is on the left side of the balance point, and the high frequency loads are on the right side. Everything that we do with the voltage regulator impacts the high speed load. So if what we're seeing at the high speed load is too large a signal, our, our noise response is too large, our immediate reaction would be to make a lower resistance regulator and that would be exactly wrong, the wrong direction. It would make our transient response even worse. And the, worse, the, the lower we try to make the resistance of that regulator, the worse we're going to create the transient at the high speed load. And so we've shown that through these three uh, demonstrations. There is just one de more demonstration that I wanted to show uh, while we have this all connected. And that is that we talk about one port measurements and we talk about two port measurements and how it is that they relate to uh, measuring capacitors. So here's a decoupling capacitor. This one is a, a 0.1 microfarad. You know, we can go ahead and optimize that. And so the importance of this measurement is that decoupling capacitors at low frequencies have relatively high impedance. Um, and the one port measurement is ideally situated to make high impedance measurements. In fact, the one port reflection measurement has a 66 dB dynamic range limit, and it starts at about an ohm, and it goes up to about 2,000 ohms. So it would seem like it's really good for measuring small ceramic capacitors.
Um, but there is an issue, and the issue is that at series resonance, we see the ESR of the capacitor, and the ESR is very, very low, uh, typically in tens of milliohms for a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. And that's far below the measurement range of a one-port measurement. So I wanted to show this tremendous dynamic range that in this case is going from 100 ohms at 10 kilohertz all the way down to approximately 0.1 ohms at its series resonance just below 10 megahertz. And so for that reason, uh, we generally need to use a two-port measurement for this capacitor, and we're going to show the two-port measurements when we get to lab two. So that concludes our lab one measurements. We did four measurements, one of a three-meter cable to show its multi-mode resonance and to show the match point. We did a measurement of a printed circuit board trace to show that printed circuit boards just look the same as cables. Those also have resonant modes that intersect at the balance point. Uh, we showed the impact of that in a high-speed load and how it is that by inserting the right value of voltage regulator impedance, we can minimize the noise at the load side. And we also showed how to measure a ceramic capacitor with a one-port measurement. And we'll show how to make that as a two-port measurement in lab two. So that concludes our lab one measurements. Thanks.